Please welcome Michael Fabiano. I love opera. It's the most passionate and visceral of all art forms. Opera is more than entertainment. It's drama, acting, technology, dance, art, all married to exquisite music. The mechanism by which opera tells its story is through suffering and triumph, ignorance and knowledge, hubris and humility, angels and demons, heroes and villains. If we strip all of that away, we don't have opera. The stories are timeless, but operas performed today were written more than 100 years ago. Yet what hasn't stood the test of time are the librettos, which can be rife with offensive stereotypes and repressively misogynistic. So, what's our responsibility as artists when performing a work that is culturally offensive? Are we strict constitutionalists who have no right to change the work of a great artist from long ago? Or do we need to look at the work in the context of our times and consider nuanced changes that make the work relevant, more acceptable, and less offensive to audiences in 2018? I was forced to confront just the situation recently. I was cast as the Duke of Mantova and Rigoletto at the Royal Opera House in London. This particular production is known for its dark interpretation of a feudal system which depicts violence and objectification against women. As an actor, I'm able to play brutal, unrelenting characters all the time. But in this instance, it seemed we could communicate the Duke's treachery without adding vicious and gratuitous violence. To the great credit of the director and the production team, they allowed me to express my artistic integrity and amend my interpretation of how to depict brutality without ever actuating violence on stage. Judging by the critical reaction, we were able to achieve our goal of a production that was true to the characters and the source material, yet more acceptable and appropriate in light of today's realities. Since most operas today have sometimes outdated and offensive values, I think it's time that as artists and as society, we question how we deal with all of this material. After the flood of harassment and assault stories this year, I vow to listen even more to my colleagues and actively look for signs that someone might be less than comfortable. As a white male artist who often plays characters on stage that are very powerful, it's not enough for me to refrain from harassing others or just remain neutral. Critical empathy means examining how power structures and inequities affect people in positions different from my own. We cannot just leave our moral compasses in the dressing room. I don't know all the appropriate questions, let alone the best answers, but I know that we must continue to look for a path that keeps the creator's original intent intact while respecting today's sensibilities and culture. There are other ways to mitigate the sometimes stilted viewpoints in opera. I look forward to performing operas composed by women and, and people of diverse backgrounds and have further opportunities to collaborate with female conductors as much as possible. The marketplace of ideas has always been one of my most favorite political philosophies because it values the contribution of ideas from all people. Adding more voices to the artistic marketplace will only make it better. And speaking of performing, I would like to invite Benedict Jordois to the stage we will perform Il Lamento di Federico from Chilea's L'Arlesiana. I chose this piece. I chose this piece because it portrays the torment of a man when he isn't allowed to be true to himself and the woman he loves. Thank you very much. Oh, mon Dieu. Hey, 
solita storia del pastore. Il povero ragazzo voleva raccontarla. Come in mio Anch'io vorrei dormire così nel sonno alla bene lo Oh! 